This is the second episode on the tool cabinet construction. By now you know that all my boards are prepped and ready to go for casework. As I mentioned earlier, all the corners are going to be joined by dovetail. So I had a choice to make, half blind or through dovetail. I chose to go with through dovetail because I really just love the way the exposed joints look. But now that raises some issue. Since I, wa I wanted the back to sit in a rabbit, the problem with that, if I just do a through dovetail, I'm going to be left with a notch at the back that just doesn't look good. I could plug it, but that doesn't look right to me. Another solution would be to use a router with a rabbit plane and do it after the case is put together. It does work, but the problem with that, you're left with weak exposed end grade. That might pop up at some point of the project. So in the end, I went in another direction which is doing an half tail at the back. And the very back of the, the half tail is actually mitered. So, so when you look at it, you just see a nice tight joint. And the, the back just really sit nicely in it and you don't see it. So that's the way I'll go. Now that being said, I'm gonna take time to show you how I go about to cut my dovetail. I'm just gonna do a simple dovetail, not the miter version. We'll keep it for another show. So this is my basic dovetailing toolkit. I have a marking gauge. This is a cutting wheel one made by Veritas, a really nice one. It's gonna be used to mark my baseline of my dovetail. I need divider to lay out the tail for actually measuring the tail without measuring. We'll see that later. For sewing my dovetail, I do use a saw guide. This one is made by Veritas, again, a really great one. Some people may say it's cheating, but I get such great result that I don't want to let go of that. I'm still working on my freehand dovetail, but for now, that works for me. You need a Japanese tile saw to go with that. Chisel, the size will depend upon the scale of your work. A mallet for the chisel. A coping saw for wasting between the tails and pin. A square. A marking knife, a mallet to drive the joints together, but not too much. So let's start the dovetail. The first thing to do is going to be to identify your piece and orient them. So there's going to be the tail board and the pin board. To orient them, I'm going to put a triangle. This represents either bottom or back, and this is the top or front, depending if it's a box or a cabinet. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to number my corner. Because remember, it's easy to get mixed up. Because this joint is going to go together that way. If by mistakes along the road, you flip your board at the other end, that's going to be a problem. So keep your piece oriented. Now, I'm going to establish the baseline of my tail. So to do that, I'm going to use the, cut, the marking gauge and use my board as a reference. My blade slightly overshoot the board, but that's okay. In the end, we want the tail and pin to be proud. So I'm gonna mark my tail board and my pin board. So I'm gonna use the small divider as for the shoulder of the dovetail. It's going to be about 3 8 to half an inch. It's not that important. It's just a practice, actually. So I'm going to put the one pin on the side and the other one, I'm going to use it to make a small indentation. Then repeat on the other side. Make sure it's visible. So with the other one, say I want two dovetail. So I'm going to try to divide the space between the two indentation with this divider 
So that looks about right. So I put one pin in the, in the, in the small hole. Then I walk the divider. One, two. I'm slightly overshooting the other hole, but that's okay. That's what we want. The difference between the divider pin and the hole actually represent the top of the, the of the dovetail. So we'll walk the divider. So one, I do in a small hole. Two, I do not mark the, the second one. I'm gonna restart on the other hole. One, mark. Two, do not mark. So you're gonna be left with four holes, which actually represent the dovetail. For more clarity, I just penciled the mark to show you how you can get two really nice dovetail without even breaking a ruler. So the next step is just to cut the line. So I'm adjusting the guide to be sure it's on tail position. Line it up and cut the line. step I'm going to use the coping saw to remove the waste between the two tail. All it's left to do is to cut the shoulder of the dovetail. step on the tail board is going to be cleaning up between the tail with a small chisel. Tail board now become the marking gauge for your pin board. First thing first, make sure your orientation is good and the number match and just set the board at the right height in device. I'm using a small block plane as a support for my board when I'm going to trace it. It's just easier like that. So I'm making sure I'm making sure the board line up and are square to each other. Then I'm going to use a cutting knife to trace my tail on my my tail on my pin board. I'm gonna mark the waist to cut the right thing. Then it's just a question of sewing the line. Once again, the coping saw removed the waist. joint is done. It still need a bit of work but that's pretty much all there is to it. If you're interested in dovetail I suggest that you do some research. This is my way but there's a thousand way out there. Just find what works for you and keep practicing. Now let's get to the tool cabinet. <laughs> Oh,
I play. 